he wrote a letter when he got home and he, I gather, he was just thrilled with this whole experience. And really he expressed the desire, if he could, I mean, the dream that he might have come to live in Canada. He was um, very, very enamored of the island and the way of life, I think. And I found him to be quite a modern sort of person. He, he was quite liberated and much less traditional than I expected from a Japanese master. Very, very open-minded and um, very, very uh, fascinated and curious about new, new things, new techniques, new ways of doing things. Actually, I think one of the comments he did make after he got back to Japan was that he was even more aware of how constrained and, and bound by convention they are in Japan after having experienced the three weeks here. So I got the idea of doing a journal and through haiku and each day at the end of the day I would write a haiku and, and write it very spontaneously based on our experience of the day. The whole cycle is called the master's hands because of course his hands were very elegant, very efficient and very tender. Day one, burled fingers to steel, blade opening yellow cedar's heart, fragrance of love. The first day, of course, we learned to carve and cart. We had to learn to carve and carve all our blocks. And some people had nine or ten blocks to carve. I had seven. Other people had three or four. And he chose what he felt was the Canadian wood closest to what he uses, which is in magnolia. And he chose the yellow cedar for us to use because he felt it was appropriate for us to be using a material that was, that's found in our environment. And of course, yellow cedar, when you uh, cut into it, releases this beautiful perfume. Every day I thought, am I ever going to be able to get to the end of this day with the things that we have to do today? It seemed an enormous amount of work and I didn't know how to do any of it. It was all new to me. I never carved, ever. Jars of colored inks embalm insect eyes. Stained fingers a thousand butterflies. Well, when we walked into the studio on the second day, the long table had a line of these wonderful jars full of colored ink, 12 different colors that the master and Yuko had mixed for us. And of course, they're all natural dyes. And they glowed and they were like jars of jewels. And I, I got thinking of uh, insect eyes in there, <laughs> dragonfly eyes and so on. And of course, when we were when we got into the jars with our uh, brushes and so on, we, our fingers got really badly stained. So and that, and that made me think of our fingers, butterflies flying <laughs> with all the colored inks on them. So we spent the second day um, dyeing our um, stamping and rinsing and covering, with, um, covering the, the dyes on the fabric. We were in shock. Having to do everything in, in the absolute traditional way with the traditional tools that he had brought, with traditional dyes, 
Oh, no, no, it had to be done with the uh, dyes that were used in the 16th century. I believe this technique was prominent in. And some of us found that hard. But of course, it was all about the experience of, of using these ancient techniques and the beauty of it and the ritual. Day three, smoked in persimmon oil, paper cones of rice glue, pressing against infinity. On the third day, we were given these beautiful cones made out of rice paper that had been smoked in persimmon oil and they have this gorgeous ready bronze cochineal sort of color there's a little tiny hole in the top and you stuff rice glue into the cone not too much and then like a, an icing bag there's a technique for holding it and you squeeze it and outline your your uh, print all the all the images on your pay, on your fabric with the rice glue, and that is done to prevent bleeding from one color to the other. And that was a very difficult process for us. I mean, they were all difficult. All these processes were difficult, challenging. I perhaps should say. Day four, our kites catch wing and threads of flame we fly, the master's joy. On day four, our fabrics were rolled up in uh, corrugated cardboard and put into a steamer a specially designed steamer. Tubes of fabric were placed inside the steamer and they were steamed for hours to set the color. And then when they came out of the steamer, we had to dry them. I think the traditional way would be to dry them over a brazier in the, in the, art, in the Japanese artist studio. We used the stove, but we also had um, a propane barbecue and he took my piece and took it out into the garage. All the little threads that hung down on the sides kept catching fire, sort of bursting into flame and I was having a fit, but he wasn't, he wasn't bothered at all. What I was so enchanted with that day was that he was dancing as he moved, but by this time he was feeling really quite confident. I think, that this workshop was going to be a success because that was terribly important to him, that the workshop be a success. So he, his body was expressing his, his joy and his pleasure in, in working with us and he was dancing and his fingers were fluttering. I was rushing out to dry my thing. He was holding it up here and it was flying, the fabric was flying and it, it was like flying a kite. Day five, sees night kimono. From her silk sleeves, the master's hands trail luminescence. This um, haiku is, is a little bit different. The tone is a bit different because um, I wanted to capture a sense of the of the the incredible beauty and poignancy and sadness of it all coming to an end. And uh, in Japanese haiku, or in the tradition of Japanese, the courtly tradition of Japanese poetry, um, sleeves kimono sleeves often signify weeping or tears and the, you know, the, the courtesan wipes her eyes with her tears when her lover has left her. And so oh, I suppose, and now that's just coming to me, I suppose in a sense he was our lover or we thought of him as our lover because 
of this wonderful experience that we'd had. And trailing luminescence, well, the sea, the, the luminescence of the sea at night, the little creatures and the beauty of all that. And that ties in with the sparks of the flame and the smoked persimmon cones and the, the insects in the jars of dye. And so the luminescence, the uh, almost the liminal quality of the whole event, the magic of the whole event with the Master. <laughs>